Hi, I'm Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. Uh, I'm chasing the sun today. That's why we're outside. And it is a beautiful day in the garden, but it's freezing cold. So I've been moving around the house, turning heaters on, looking for warm patches of sunlight. I thought I'd do a quick video about Pride Month books. And we've got an episode which I'm putting up later today for the podcast where Annie and I talk about our recommended reads and for LGBTQI plus books um, and also some that are on our, t quite a few that are on our TBR. So we've got a long list of books. I'll just talk about a couple now. Three that I recommend and three that I'm hoping to get to. So the first one is Snare by Lilia Sigas Dato Dadotir, which I might be mispronouncing, I apologise, and it's translated by Quentin Bates from the Icelandic. And this is actually a crime novel. It's a really fun, well-paced thriller. Um, her work has been compared to a mix of Nordic noir and Mexican telenovela, and she grew up partly in Mexico. So it has that drama and fast pace and just really fun feel to it and quirky characters but it centres on Sonia who's and sort of an inadvertent drug smuggler trying to get her life back on track after a messy divorce and that's just how she ends up sort of making money and becomes really good at it but wants to get out. Um, there's a man in customs who's sort of hot on her trail. She has a girlfriend called Agla and so that relationship is not the main feature of the novel but it is significant the author has spoken about how she realizes now that it is actually significant to see that in Icelandic fiction um, and she wishes she'd had more of that when she was growing up and reading books and not seeing lesbian characters represented so for that reason I thought it was a good pick its own voices and it just rings true her style is very matter-of-fact and um, it's a you know strong writing so I recommend Snare I think it's being adapted for television and it's the first in a trilogy so after Snare there's Trap and Cage or vice versa which I haven't read but um, I will get to those as well so that's the first one the second book which I'm sure that I've talked about before is You Will Be Safe Here by Damien Barr which is a wonderful novel set in South Africa partly during the Second Boer War in the early 1900s and partly in modern day South Africa where a young boy or 15 year old boy is sent to a camp called the, I think it's the New Dawn Safari Camp where they say they will make boys into men or make men out of boys and that's because his mother and stepfather are concerned that he's not manly enough and he's not conforming and um, they sort of want to sort him out or the stepfather certainly does and it's a really cruel sort of tragic story but in fact he's such an engaging character and the style is so it's so well done the dialogue is really rings true and the um, the characters come to life and so whilst I was apprehensive that this was a upsetting subject matter it actually was really engaging to read and so uh, I really recommend that and again it's not as we say we talk about this in the podcast his sexuality isn't even explicit or talked about explicitly in the book and that's not the the main story if you like but it is letting you into a different point of view and giving you an idea of the sort of challenges that for example gay men would face living in South Africa even today this is a you know modern story apart from the um, the historical roots of that story or roots of that violence um, and so it touches on all of those things very sensitively and it's as I say really well done I highly recommend it just a great read so that's by Damien Barr you will be safe here and the third one is what belongs to you by Garth Greenwell so I am coming late to this it's a, a was published a few years ago and has become something of an instant classic and was recommended um, particularly I saw it recommended in a video that Matthew Sharappa did and it's a great video I'll see if I can link it below if I can find it again but he talks about a customer coming into the store 
wanting a book that's interesting, set in Europe, perhaps with a you know good use of language, and you know literary fiction. And Matthew Sharapa recommended this one, and then the customer said, "Oh, I don't know. It sounds like it's a bit gay, and that I don't know if I can relate to that." And and it just you know that was actually a a video that after watching it I thought oh that's outrageous and how narrow-minded and all of this and then I realized I didn't have actually many books by gay or LGBTQI plus authors in my own shelves and immediately went and bought this one and it has taken me until now to read it because uh, this is how it goes with my TBR pile which is why I'm trying to read through it this year um, and definitely you know, I wish I'd got to it sooner, but really, really strong. And there's so much in this book. It's only short. It's about a teacher who meets a man called Mitko. He lives in Bulgaria. He goes into these toilets in the National uh, Cultural Centre, National Palace of Culture, and meets Mitko, who's a hustler, basically, but he's very magnetic and charming. Um, and so the narrator sort of strikes up a relationship with him but it's on again off again and then we go into you know and he's sort of holding Mitko at a distance and then you go into his own personal backstory and why he sort of has these puts up these defenses and it, which is a really sort of sad poignant story about his childhood in America and his rejection by his parents or his father certainly and it just becomes this very sort of heartbreaking backstory that then feeds into the current day story and you there's just so many layers in this book and so much to talk about and I'm still processing it but beautiful lyrical sentences really long but very propulsive sentences that really move move you forward so and I, I'm really in awe of that where you can write a sentence that's that it has this beautiful use of language and evocative prose, but it's not blousy or flabby or just done to show off. It's actually moving at the same time, like in the same way that Virginia Woolf can do. And I don't see many authors who successfully do that. So yeah, so really, really good. Sorry, there's a truck going past um, and I'm really glad I read it and I'm recommending that one if you haven't read it yet you probably have because I'm very late to this but what belongs to you then I suppose I'll start with Garth Greenwell for the books on my TBR which cleanness by Garth Greenwell which is his follow-up so this is a collection of short stories again set in Bulgaria I don't know much more um, I'm looking forward to going into it. I've heard him speak about it and he speaks so beautifully that sort of enticed me to go and buy it. I gather that there is a recurring character as well who comes into some of the stories. I don't know if that's Mitko. There is also an American teacher again. So it'll be interesting to see the parallels having just read What Belongs to You. But I will report back once I've read this. Let me know if you've been reading it. That's Cleanness. Then one that Annie had recommended when we did our podcast and I have had it in my shelves for so long and I must read it. I'm just pulling it out of the, it's in a box. This is Orlando by Virginia Woolf and I was given this beautiful folio edition which has pictures and it has an introduction by Jeanette Winterson. Um, so that's the opening picture there. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but it is just this gorgeous object. And Orlando is about a, is it a girl and then she becomes a boy or vice versa, but a, a sort of transgender character, but it spans many, many years. And um, Annie talks about it much more articulately in the podcast, but I that's the gist of the story as I recall. But Virginia Woolf, I love her writing. I've sort of been reading her slowly I, I read Mrs Dalloway and To the Lighthouse and really loved tho those books but there are others that I haven't got to yet and as always it's been sitting waiting on my shelf so this month would be a great month to get to it if I can or indeed any time is a good time to pick up a book like this but uh, you know Pride Month is a good prompt for getting to these books so that's Orlando which I will put back in the 
beautiful box. And the other one, which I bought last year, is Guapa by Salim Haddad. And this looks really good. It's about a young man who lives in a Middle Eastern city that's affected by the Arab Spring. It, the city's not named, but the author Salim Haddad grew up, was born in Kuwait City, but also grew up in Jordan, Canada and the UK. So he has a fairly global upbringing to draw from and all we know is it's a Middle Eastern city, it's the Arab Spring and the narrator or the protagonist Raza works as an interpreter by day and by night he goes to the Guapa which is a gay nightclub and he has a lover called Ta uh, Tamor but then his grandmother walks in on them one night so it's uh, everything falls apart and it's also then Tamor's wedding day and Tamor wants to go ahead with his wedding so that's a setback for Raza that sort of kicks off the story and I started reading it last week just to have a, a sort of dip into it and get a feel for the book and really enjoyed the tone and the friendliness um, and the sort of engaging protagonist voice of the story. So I don't know where it will go from there, but um, it just sounds really original and a different perspective, a different place, different sort of culture. So um, he's been described as an Arab Tennessee Williams and the topic of gay life in the Arab world is richly complex and his cinematic evocative prose rises to meet the sensitive subject matter. So it just sounds really interesting and again it's been on my shelf so I'm dying to get to this one and it's a beautiful Europa Editions book. So yeah, I love most of their books so that should be good. That's uh, Guapa by Salim Haddad and there were a few others on that um, we talked about on the podcast, but I don't have them with me. Um, one that I will mention that I have ordered is Lot by Brian Washington, which just won the Dylan Thomas Prize and is uh, he's a black queer author in Houston, based in Houston and this is a collection of stories set in Houston. He talks about the variety or the diversity of people um, in within the city and the gentrification and there are you know, lots of issues that he explores so in his stories. So Lot is on order. It's in between sort of the hardback release and then the paperback hasn't quite come out yet so it's been hard to get but I will get it. Anyway, let me know if you're reading anything for Pride Month and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.